Hi there. I went to install Ubuntu on my Apple Silicon Mac. It's an M1 MacBook Pro. I chose Ubuntu over other distributions for a couple of reasons. One is I want to experiment with the O3DE game engine, and it mentions that there is experimental ARM processor support for Ubuntu in particular. And I noticed that a lot of folks who use open source tools for integrated circuit design tend to use Ubuntu. I'm going to try this in Parallels, and let's see if Parallels will download it for me. Download Ubuntu Linux. There's a link right here. Continue. Let's see. This is the latest version for ARM, I guess. Download. Oh, it just started up. It didn't ask me anything. So it wants to install some stuff. It installed the installation agent, and now it wants me to restart. It's all stretchy. Why is it all stretchy? Let's see if I... Ah, there we go. I just adjusted the window size slightly, and it fixed it. Okay, I don't want to have a username of Parallels. Probably the easiest thing to do is to add a new user and then delete the Parallel users. Let's see, can I look up different settings? Ah, here's a magnifying glass. Users. Add or remove users. Let us add a user. Oh, I need to unlock. Add user. Okay, now I'm going to create the name Ubuntu. And the reason I'm using the username Ubuntu is that Jennifer Hassler's research group at Georgia Tech developed an open source tool chain that runs on Intel Max, okay, and that has the username Ubuntu. And I want to try to get their software running on my Apple Silicon Mac. So this is probably the easiest way to make that happen. So this is just to try to make that process easier. Okay, set it as administrator. Okay, let's test that. Let me log out. Um, <laughs> hello? <laughs> I wanted the login screen back. Oh, that just took a while. I guess it was rebooting or something. Anyway, let's now log into Ubuntu. Oh, wait, how did I miss this setup screen the last time? Anyway, let's see. Ubuntu Pro. No, skip all of this for now. No, do not share data. Why would I want to do that? Get started. Okay, whatever. Now, are we fully up to date on everything? Let's see, where's the terminal? Terminal. Okay, apt get update. Do you update first? Or wait, is it just apt update now? Permission denied. Oh, how about sudo apt update? Do to do to do to do. 267 packages can be upgraded. Okay, let's do sudo apt upgrade. I feel like this is something that for new users, there should be a GUI thing at the very beginning that automatically does this for you. Do you want to continue? Sure. Go for it. Okay, so it looks like we're done here. And this thing just popped up. I have no idea if this thing popping up is related to what I just did here or if it happened independently. Anyway, sure, let's restart now. Let's see, there's this software updater. Oh, that's separate from the apt get stuff. Sure, install now. What is all this? The software is up to date. Okay, do I need to restart? I guess it didn't ask me to restart. Oh, it looks like it's happily reading a Mac formatted solid state drive. Can I write to that drive? Okay. Let me try dragging and dropping this file over there. Ah, it looks like it copied OK. Let's pin the terminal to the dash. Now, can I drag and drop files right from the Mac OS into Ubuntu? Ah, look at that. I can. Now, let's see. Can I change the name here? Rename. Okay, so I'll change this to logo two. Let's see if I can drag it back. Ah, yes. Okay, that's excellent. So good. 
Let's talk about shared directories. So I created this directory called Ubuntu underscore shared. Let's see. Settings. Let's go to options. Sharing. Share custom Mac folders with Linux. Manage said folders. Custom folders. Let's add a folder. Ubuntu shared. OK. Now, will this just magically work, or do I need to restart? OK. Let's open up the terminal. And let's see, where does that show up? Let's see, I just looked it up, and it says it shows up in slash media slash PSF. Ah, there we go. Let's go to Ubuntu Shared. Ah, there's my test file. And I can see my test file. What if I make a copy of that test file? Does it show up over here now? Whoop. Does it show up over here now? Yes. Oh, sorry. Let me squoosh that over. Yeah, that works. Okay, there's some really dubious color choices going on here. I'll need to figure out how to change that. Okay, let's check out this App Center. Featured snaps. Huh. Is Visual Studio Code on here? No. Yeah, I know, I know. Look, I used VI, the original VI, not NeoVim, not Vim, VI, all through grad school. I switched to Emacs at the start of my postdoc. I actually paid for TextMate and used it for a long time. But now I mostly use Visual Studio Code, and I like it, even though it's kind of plebeian. Although I really wish people would stop trying to shove AI coding in my face. Okay, Visual Studio Code Linux. Go away, AI. Go away. That's what I want. Download and install it for your Linux distribution. Okay, so we need to do this, but we need to get this .deb file from my download page. Okay. Okay, sudo apt install dot slash all that stuff. Here we go. Ah, I have a broken package. No, 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 no. Do I have to particularly click this little ARM64 icon? Yes. The previous thing I downloaded was AMD64. I should have caught that. Wait. Why do I now have this thing in quotes? Anyway, let me remove the AMD files. Let's try this installation again. Oh, this looks really old school. Sure. Download is performed unsandboxed as root as file couldn't be accessed by user underscore apt. I ran this under sudo. What are you complaining about? Let's see, did it install? How do I open up a new window? New window. Code. Oh, wait. It did install. Yeah, there's VS Code. OK. New text file. Hello, hello, hello. Can I save my text file? Save as hello, 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 dot txt, sure. All right. So it did, in fact, install. It looks like it's all working. But why is it complaining about all of this stuff? Weird.